time that you put into that audit. Natasha. Unfortunately, this is a culture, I think. And the firms are bothered by this. And most, I don't think there's any firm that doesn't have in their, you know, manual that this is strictly prohibited. But that doesn't mean that it's not a culture that happens, that you do have seniors or managers or partners who are concerned about time and that might say to a staff person that, you know, don't record those hours. And or even as a staff person, your own internal you know, need to, to do well and to be looked upon as doing a good job if the budget says 10 hours and you, it took you 20 and you start to question yourself. Oh my God, I don't want them to think that I couldn't do the work, you know, versus, okay, this t 10 hours wasn't reasonable. I worked very efficiently and this took a lot longer. So it's important for, you know, the partner, the manager to know Here's, you know, I'm not going to get this done in 10 hours, and here's all the reasons why. Okay, so we talked about that. Is it ethical for the uh, staff person to work and not record the hours? I think most people agree no, it's not ethical. Who's affected? We talked about that. The firm's affected the, the, because they're not going to get um, uh, fees for work that was actually done. That's for the partner to manage with the client in terms of if you feel that the work was, if, if you're over budget because you think your team wasn't as efficient as they can be, that's one thing. You can't necessarily go to the client and say, oh, my team is inefficient, pay me. But if you think your team was efficient, you know they were efficient, the client wasn't efficient or the client didn't give you information that they should have, that's between the partner and the client to work out how much of those fees that they're going to be able to collect. Um, so what alternatives does the staff have? They could either do it or they could refuse to do it. And most firms have uh, some mechanism in place um, that a staff person can go to to you know, try to resolve issues when they find themselves faced it, uh, with um, ethical dilemmas similar to that. Right? There, there is, there, and firms will encourage staff people to talk to someone else, talk to a partner, talk to, you know, um, you know, maybe someone in staffing, just so that you don't feel that you are kind of on your own having to make these kinds of decisions. But the, it starts with you in terms of recognizing that this is an ethical, it's unethical because it's against firm policy and it's your own internal, you know, ethical standards that's going to dictate your behavior. So ethical conduct in the professions, obviously, because of the kind of work that we do, because of the, our faith, um, the faith that we present to the public, that the public relies on, our, on the information that we, um, we uh, sign off on, it's important for them to proceed, um, and it's important for us to show as CPAs that we have ethics and that we abide by um, the professional code of conduct. Which brings me to the professional code of conduct, so we saw this, we kind of started with this last week when we talked about the professional code, um, and the profession, professional principles of the professional code, and that's what our ethical guidelines are. That's what guides the profession um, from an ethical perspective or ethical principles are these uh, six aspects of the code of professional conduct. So questions about ethics and what we went over today. So. As I said, we're going to break early today.